Greetings, 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 greetings. I am very, very, very excited. Uh, first of all, I do want to thank everyone that is subscribed with a hit record. I was just telling David that I do have a surprise. Last episode was on food insecurity. And we've hit a record viewing of 5,000 views. That is amazing. Thank God for what we're doing here. I'm very, very positive and feel very, very proud of this show. And I'm going to keep doing it and hope. You know, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. But I think we're doing very, very good. I need you all to check it out to see how many subscribers that we have right now. Also record breaking. But here we are today. I hope you're all doing good. Some of you are still on spring break. Some of you came back from spring break. But we are here. So today, uh, by the way, I don't usually even put on a tie. I'm not a big tie person. But for today's topic, I decided to uh, look for my red tie. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, because of the topic we're about to discuss today. As I promised, we're going to do to love or not to love, to date or not to date in college. So, first things first, as we discuss this topic, I do want you all to understand that the topic I'm about to talk about is not a requirement. What do I mean by that? That means in college, you are there for very specific reason, a very specific purpose. If you so happen to fall in love, then so be it. But you're not there to pursue, to make sure, to force the situation of falling in love. I hope I've made myself clear. If it evolves, who am I to stop you, right? If it evolves naturally, then so be it. But again, it's not a requirement because I have heard my students say many, many, many at times, it's part of college, right? I have to have a boyfriend or I have to have a girlfriend. Again, if it happens, it happens, but there's no requirement. If you want to have a boyfriend, that's fine, but you don't need to. It is a want, okay? So don't fall short of peer pressure just because your friends are dating for whatever reason then you feel like you have to. So let's put that out there. The second, which always breaks my heart when I hear it, is Professor Chris. This is the best of me. This is my best opportunity in college to find somebody because I'm young and this is the best version of me. If I don't find somebody right now, then I'm losing out. False. Okay? Because to be honest, I've seen it both ways and I will share quite a few with you today. I've seen students who've met their soulmates in college, it's gone great, graduated, married that same person. I've also seen, on the other hand, where things don't go too well and they graduate and eventually find somebody or find their soulmates. So please, 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 I hope you don't dwell on the fact that this is the best version of me. This is when, you know, I'm the most beautiful, I'm the most handsome. So if I don't find somebody right now, then that is the end of the world. Okay. So before we get started, or maybe we've started, I do want to make a couple of disclaimers on this topic here. Because sometimes it comes out as if I do not want you to date while you're in college. And that's not the case. So my little disclaimer today is going to be, you are not going to hear me say date or don't date, okay? I'm going to try and paint a picture so you can make your own decision. I know lately my episodes have been painting a lot of pictures. I might become Leonardo sometime very soon, but hopefully some of those pictures that I paint help you make some good decisions or gives a better perspective, a better view of the point I'm trying to make, okay? So again, my disclaimer today is that I'm just gonna look at both ends of the coin, present practical, real situations, 
And at the end, you got to make your own decision. But I do have a surprise for you at the end. Anyway, so again, that's my disclaimer and my point I need you to hold on to very dearly as I go through this is that it is natural. And if it happens, it's a beautiful thing. Let it unfold, okay? But by no means should you feel pressured to be in a relationship or to date. Okay, now that my disclaimer is out of the way, let's get to it. I joke about statistics. Again, I do have a math degree um, and I love math, but I try to stay away from the numbers. But some of my reviews have shown that we love the numbers. We love the statistics. Okay, maybe helps paint a better picture. So I'm going to give you a statistic based on this topic. Yeah, believe it or not, there is a stats for dating in college. So here's one stat. Statistics, approximately 60% of college students have a significant other at some point during their college careers. I see that because that is why sometimes we tend to think it's the norm, it's the trend. You have to have a boyfriend or girlfriend or you have to be in a relationship because that percentage is pretty high. You're going to see it, okay, 60%. However, only 33% of the college relationships become long-term commitments. And that's a source from Harvard University. By the way, the first data I gave was from Penn State. 60% of college students have a significant other. And the second one was from Harvard University. 33% of the college become long-term commitments. So it depends on how you look at it. When I look at this number... It kind of makes the point that I've been trying to make, which is don't feel like you're losing out if you don't find or if you don't date, if you're not in a relationship while in college and think all hope is lost. Because again, only 33%, which means the 67% graduate college and somehow find their soulmates. Okay, so that's how I read into that. Why is this topic very important? Why? Do I want to discuss topic? First of all, many requests, since I mentioned that I was going to do this topic, a lot of requests about, okay, you know, when is this going to happen? So it's finally here. But mainly it's because this is a topic that is part of our college transformative period. When you're going to go through college, you probably will find yourself in a relationship and it significantly impacts our overall experience, good or bad as I will be talking about today. So we cannot underestimate the power of love. And now when we're talking about mental health, okay, again, good or bad, we need to understand how relationships and falling in love plays a big role mentally and, of course, emotionally. I have seen students do things for love in all good ways but it can also drive some of us to places that we can never imagine. And I've seen students do many crazy things as well, okay? So yes, we have to talk about this topic. Is it, a, it is part of college experience, it is part of college life, and also we need to caution, right? We need to address the different ways this can affect us, again, mentally, emotionally. So yes, it is part of our mental health topic discussions we need to talk about that, okay? So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to talk about the pros of dating in college. And then we can talk about the cons of dating in college, okay? So very quickly, one of my first pros about dating is you are building meaningful connection. Because as I mentioned, potentially, it could be a long-lasting relationship that you develop, that you build, and... You're going to carry on with that relationship. Quick story. One of my love stories that I love to tell all the time was one of my students that was in my engineering mechanics class, statics. Really smart gentleman. Loved him dearly. Every after class, you know, come to me. And, of course, he played soccer. So we would talk about soccer quite often after class. 
passed my class, moved on. I didn't know that uh, his girlfriend was going to be in my class the following semester. So, as usual, in my class, I tend to have this connection with my students. So I will have 150 students, and I would know every single student by week two of the semester because I do intentionally want to have that connection to all my students. So when the young lady who happened to be in my class the following semester, when I called her out, <laughs> I had no idea that she had any connection with my former student, uh, Mr. William. So I called her out and very surprised after class, she came up to me and she said, oh, William did tell me that you were going to know my name. You're going to call me. And I said, who's William? Which William are we talking about? And he told me and he said, it was my boyfriend. I watched this two so closely. Even after my classes, you know, I'll see Mr. William, I'll go to soccer games and I watched them so closely and finally graduated and got married. So I use this as an example because I always think about this. I always remember how it all evolved. And I got many stories like that. And it's a beautiful thing. All right. So yes, you could build meaningful connections. What else? Emotional support. Yes. If you are in a relationship, one of the key things in college is sometimes you're either far away from your family, from your friends, but if you are in a relationship, that person happens to be the one that provides emotional support. One of my stories, again, when it comes to emotional support, was one of my students who quite often came to me to talk about Professor Chris. I have to miss class today, and this happened quite often. So one day I said, what is happening? We need to really address this issue because this is not helping you academically. And he finally opened up to tell me about what his girlfriend was going through. Unfortunately, she was suicidal. So she had a different, a lot of appointments that she had to take her to. And as much as I was trying really hard to talk him out of the situation, I did realize that if I did, that could have gone bad. So emotionally, yes, I get it because sometimes in college you're going to go through this. You have people that, you know, can deal with, help you. It could be a loss, right? If you lose someone, by the way, that would be my next topic is how to cope with loss while in college. But yes, if you happen to be in a relationship and you lose someone close in the family, you have somebody that you can lean on. If there's a situation, you have somebody, you know, to lend a shoulder that you know, can help. So yes, I get it. Emotional support will be there. If you did it in college, you're going to get that. Last but not the least is social integra integration. Yes. Sometimes in college, we find it very difficult to go to events because it's either all boys or all girls. So socially, you know, we tend to stick with ourselves. Right? We don't really integrate ourselves that much. However, if you're dating, right, your girlfriend or your boyfriend can invite you to the girls' events, vice versa, to the boys' events, so you learn that. One of my favorite stories about social integration was when one of my students, female in class, was passing out flyers in the class, and she was a member of the Society for Women Engineers. And all the guys in the room were wondering why they were getting this flyers since they thought the society was just for women. So when a student said, no, you know, they, they're invited, they could come, you should see the glow in their faces. And of course, we all knew exactly why they were so excited about being able to go to the Society for Women Engineers, or mainly the women clubs. We all know the ulterior motive, but it was very exciting. And I always remember the glow in their face, you know, when they find that out. So yes, again, when it comes to dating in college, the social integration can be a very good component of that experience. Okay? All right. So you're just wondering, is that it? Uh, no, there is more. I just picked the top three. But now let's talk about the cons of dating in college. Once again, I'm just 
the angel's advocate. All right, doing my best to look at both ends of the coin. When it comes to the cons, one of my biggest one is time constraints. Yes. Dating does take a lot of time. It's a full time work on both ends. You have to understand each other's commitment because it becomes a very big issue. The expectations of spending time together become so high. So, so high, we sometimes forget why we're in college to begin with and everything is focused, excuse me, on our relationships. I have seen it drop grades. And I will be talking about relationships and our academics, how closely those are related. So my first point, again, is time constraints and how that can affect your academics when you're dating. The second one is a potential distraction. It could start from you taking very easy classes so you can focus on your relationship. And sadly, before you know it, it takes a complete 360 where now you are more interested in the relationship that you are in. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. But now you're caught in the web where you've, your prioritization is all wrong. Okay. And I've seen that. So potential distraction is also one of the key things we need to watch out for. And my least favorite that breaks my heart, that breaks my student heart, is the breakup and their impact. That, to me, is sometimes where I go, is it really worth it to be in a relationship while you're in college? Because one of the experiences that I will never forget was when a semester started and one of my tutoring assistant, my student, whom I've never seen in that way, was going through a breakup. And I'm telling you, literally for that whole semester, even getting him to go into the class was a problem. I literally, in the mornings, when I go to my office, he will be right outside my office waiting for me will get into my office and I will reach out to his friends to bring notes from the class. This was way before we were recording lectures, before COVID, where things were virtual. And I've shared the story many, many a times. Morning in my office, we'll get out, go get lunch together and come back into my office and helping him get through this. I was very happy because in some situations, I've actually had my students leave, drop out of school because they just couldn't handle the breakups. I've had students enlist or join the military because of breakups. They just don't want to be there. My thing is we need to know how to handle that and it's not. I usually almost compare these breakups to a loss. Because the time it takes for people to heal, some of my students to heal from losing a loved one, is almost as close as my students dealing with breakups. So yes, that is something that unfortunately could happen if you're in a relationship. And again, this is not to deter anyone from being in a relationship, but I'm just doing my job and just painting the picture for you. Okay, so very quickly... Right, those are my pros and cons. But I think the one thing that always comes up is how to balance your academics and relationship. Again, it's not a bad thing. So yes, there are different ways to look at the situation if you happen to find yourself in. But number one is the time management. And here are some of my strategies on doing that. And by the way, before I finish here, I'm gonna give you my top 10 list if you happen to be in a relationship, how to go about it. But time management is one thing that you, if you're in a relationship, you need to be discussing. And by that, I mean really talking about what times do you all have available on both ends to do things. Usually it helps. Like the common things like eating, 
right? If you're going to go to the cafeteria together, that's time spent. If you want to exercise together, that is time well spent. If you're vol volunteering for something, right? These are things that you could do that doesn't take away from your normal routine because, again, usually we expect that it have to be this commitment and our day starts with the relationship and has to end with the relationship. And usually you hear students complain about, we don't spend time together. So you have to be very smart about that. Studying is another way. If you, it's not a distraction. That means if you want to go to the library and study and it's not a distraction, by all means you could do that. But time management is the number one area that relationships usually affects, right, your academics. And unfortunately, if you don't do that well, your academics just goes down the drain. Another one is communication. Even as married people, we know communication is one thing that we have to constantly keep working on. So yeah, if you're in college and you happen to find yourself in a relationship, it's a very good way to start. So you know how to communicate. In this communication, my suggestion is always to be talking about your schoolwork all the time. Talk about your schoolwork all the time during your communication. What are we gonna do this weekend? Oh, you know, this weekend, I have this project to work on. I have this assignment to work on. If I finish early, then we can go to the football game. If I finish early, then we can go to the movies. Constantly talk about the commitment for your work and your exams and your class projects so that's become forefront. Otherwise, you're going to be ending up planning your dates and what you're going to do, and you're going to run into problems of not getting your school work done. And while we're talking about communication, Another part of the communication you need to be talking about is what you are doing so you each know <laughs> each other's schedule. Because how many times have I heard from my students talking about, oh, you never had any time, but I, you have time to hang out with your guy friends, or you have time to hang out with your girlfriends. I didn't know anything about that. How come I didn't get invited? I have heard it all. So please, 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 Communicate. Make sure you are having this communication because if this doesn't work well, you're not balancing your academics and your relationships and things could go wrong very quickly, very fast. And unfortunately, that could also means your relationship not going anywhere. Okay. All right. I have hit the points. I'm going to very quickly give you my tips. My top 10 tips, if you happen to find yourself in a relationship, and this is not Google, this is from my own experience. Again, fortunately, you know, I like to throw out my resume of being in four different institutions in the past 20 years and being very fortunate enough to have students that either share with me, confide with me, or... I become a shoulder for them, right, during situations like this. So I've seen it all, good and bad. My number one tip, if you find yourself in a relationship or before you get into a relationship or before it gets very serious, number one, please develop a friendship first. This allows you to understand the partner or the person you're going to the relationship with Spend time knowing each other. Be friends. You're going to be in the same classes. Great. Okay. Do that. It helps. So at least you understand each other. That's my number one. Number two is same disciplines are sometimes easier. What do I mean by same disciplines? And by no means am I saying you cannot date someone outside your discipline or your program. But same discipline means that you both understand each other's commitment when it comes to the academics. So if you happen to find someone in engineering, because no matter what engineering it is going to be, electrical, computer science, you name it, engineers understand the time commitment, the workload that it takes to do engineering. So you're not going to get someone saying, oh, why are you always doing so much homework when I'm done with my homework, right? You need to have people that understand your time commitment. So again, I do suggest same discipline, but by no means am I suggesting that you cannot find someone outside your discipline. If you do, make sure they understand your 
commitment, your workload. Okay? Number three. I already touched on this in the very beginning. That it is false to think that if you don't find someone in college, that will be the end. The best part of you can happen after college. The best version of you can happen after college. Nothing is not going to change within four or five years. So the best part of you, if you were exercising, the best part of you could still be after college. And again, you know, I usually talk about relationships and, you know, while making commitment. Think deep down inside and not so much just on the physical, okay? So have no fear that if you don't meet your soulmate in college, then it's not going to happen, all right? So again, that's my number three point. Have no fear. It could happen after college. Number four, don't be vulnerable. What do I mean by that? We feel like, oh, this is the person, this is my soulmate, and sometimes it's probably not the best match. Nothing is going right, but we're holding on to it, and people are taking advantage of each other. It goes both ways. I've heard boyfriend and girlfriend, by the way, I personally do not condone living together for whatever reason because I've always find my students fall into situations where people are taking advantage of them. Again, boyfriend or girlfriend. Two people live in the same apartment, but yet one person is paying for all the bills. Two people live in the same apartment, but one person is paying for all the groceries. One person is driving people back and forth, paying for all the gas. And one person is taking on all the financial responsibilities. Okay, that is somebody taking advantage of you. So, don't feel vulnerable. Don't feel pressured to be in a relationship just because. All right, so that's my number four. Don't be vulnerable. Number five, I already touched on, is time. It takes a lot of time, so you need to find out how to schedule the time, all right, and be, work it. <laughs> Communicate and work on that. Number six is money. Chocolates are not cheap. So be very smart. Be very, very smart when you're in a relationship. Boys, students need to know that you're all in college. You're all struggling students, financially and academically. So there shouldn't be any time where we go to dinner, we go to lunch, then there's somebody paying for it all the time. You have to understand the process that you're both students, so it is okay to either split the bill, or the movie tickets, or better yet, you're all paying on your own. Because it could be very, very expensive if one person is just paying for all the expenses. You're still in college, okay? So that's my number six. Watch the money and expense, okay? It's all right. On Valentine's Day, you want to buy a gift? Fair enough, okay? Get, get them a gift. But it cannot be a habit where one person is paying for everything all the time. Number seven, try not to be jealous. Oh boy, how many times have I seen my students camping outside a classroom? Why? Why put yourself through that? Because you've had your girlfriend or your boyfriend is talking to somebody in this classroom. You're not going to be in every classroom they're going to be in. Okay? So... Try. Let it be. Trust. And by all means, if you don't trust the relationship you are in, don't stay in it. But it's not worth it you playing detective all the time when, by the way, it's going to affect your academics or in the long run, it's going to end up being a breakup, right? Because you don't trust or you're so jealous. So try not to get too much into that. It will drive you nuts. Okay? And it's not healthy. Number eight, whatever you do, I'm going to have a whole segment for this here. Whatever you do in relationships, you don't want to be in a situation where you are pregnant. And usually when I say that, my students always think I'm only referring to the ladies. No, I could tell you the different situations where I've had where the guy is affected almost in the same way I'm not trying to compare the two. But I'm saying the emotional toll it takes. Because I, today, real life experience where the student, the guy had to drop out of school to go work so he could help 
the girlfriend that was pregnant. So yes, while the girl is carrying on all the different loads, the guy has to do the part as well. So it's not a situation that works well for anyone, okay? So I'm going to caution you to be very, very careful in your relationship so that doesn't happen. Number nine, let me get through this very quickly. Number nine is handling heartbreaks. I already talked about heartbreaks. I think that's the worst thing that can happen for a relationship just because of how I can see the toll it takes on the student. So you need to know how to handle heartbreaks. Best way, like I said, I had a student that trusted me, you know, and had somebody to lean on. It wasn't easy because at the end of the day, I have to make sure he got in his car, that he was sane enough, that I could give him the motivation to say, I will be here tomorrow morning when you come for a whole semester, again, 16 weeks, okay? For him to finally get over this here. But you definitely want somebody to talk to. So you need to know how to handle heartbreaks. And again, the easiest way is to make sure you have somebody to talk to. You can always talk to your instructors about that. You can confide in them and they will provide the support that you need. And number 10, don't allow your relationships to change your dreams or your vision in college. It's happened many, many a times. Okay? Those are my top tens. Those are my top tens. And before we close, before we close, I'm very happy that I finally did this here. Very excited. But as usual, you know, I'm going to say don't drink beer, live beer. If this is the first time you're seeing this, that means balance, eat well, exercise, and rest. That is my beer to you. I want to end with this as we're talking about this subject here. I did promise you I wasn't going to say anything about whether to date or not to date. I, I put out all the pros and cons. You're going to make your own decision, and you're going to make a very good one, I hope. Okay? But, once again... You're not losing out if you don't find someone that you love dearly in college. It can happen both ways. I have been very, very fortunate enough to attend weddings of my students based on relationship that happened in college, graduated, got married. I've attended those weddings. And I have attended weddings of my students after college. These are people they met after college. Both weddings were amazing, beautiful. Okay. And here's my surprise to you. At the end of the day, I met my beautiful wife in college. Who clearly understood my commitments. And this was during grad school. And supported me 100%. When I say support... And when I say she understood my commitment, I'm going to paint another picture for you. Since now I've become Leonardo <coughs> da Vinci. I was a teaching assistant. I was a tutoring center manager. I was providing self-care for a friend. Yes. I'm talking about mornings, providing self-care, come to school, do all this here, working on my research, and I go back home at night and help my friend. And of course, like I said, working on my research. But she stood by my side because she knew my commitment and the very little time we had, we were able to share together. Now, that is what I call love and somebody who really understands. So for that reason, for what is worth, I'm dedicating this episode to my beautiful wife. As I mentioned, I didn't say anything about dates or not dates. It can happen both ways. This is my experience. I'm going to cherish that. But please, I do hope you make the right decisions. If you don't take anything out of this podcast, just remember two things. One, let things evolve naturally. Okay. And two, hopefully, you find somebody that understands your priorities and your commitments. But once again, I think I finally got to this topic. I hope it was good. You can send in your questions. 
very grateful for my experience when it came to dating. And once again, thanks to my beautiful wife for staying with me and helping me understand what commitment really is. I'll see you on the next episode. Keep subscribing. We're doing great. Again, check the number of subscriptions and you'll be amazed. I'll see you all next week.